What's up, y'all? Welcome to another edition of ITW, the show that helps you enhance instruction through innovation. Today, we're going to be talking about coding with Google Forms and your Google Sheets. All right, I call this episode the bandwagon episode. A couple weeks ago, David came on here with a little fake Luke Keithley t-shirt on. He jumped on the Panther bandwagon. Um, so I'm gonna hop on too. There, there's probably room for there for me as well. So I'm hopping on the bandwagon. Wish them the best of luck. I'm even gonna dab for Cam and keep this little touchdown celebration see I can do it too. See, I know that I've made a fool of myself and <laughs> broken my back. Woo. Um, we're gonna get on with the show and talk to you guys about how you can code in your Google Forms and Google Sheets. Now this past week was Hour of Code. I want to start off by apologizing for this episode being a week late. It should have went out last week. That is on David and I. We made a mistake on that. Um, but we live and we learn from our mistakes, um, kind of like coding. Uh, so that leads us right into it today. And there's lots of ways that you can use coding. Um, we talk about students using coding. Hour of Code talks a lot about that. But today I want to show you just some simple tricks that you can use within your Google Forms and Google Sheets to kind of use, uh, to kind of manage your sheets and your forms a little bit better. So check out some of these tips on how you can incorporate coding into your Google Forms and your Google Sheets. In Google Forms, there are a lot of different question um, type options. Whenever you create brand new items, you're going to get a variety of different um, question types that, that you can select from. So um, when you create a brand new question, you can see here where you can choose from a, um, a range of different things in terms of what kind of question you want to ask. So if you want a multiple choice question, you can choose multiple choice. Um, if you wanted to make it a more common question where you want paragraphs of information, you can put paragraph text. So you have different options where you, where you can do. Um, but the great thing about this is, when you're, depending on which one that you select, you're going to see a variety of different options under advanced settings. So I'm just going to select my text option. And when you see text options, I have something, I have this data validation option. And you can go through and you can take a look at some of the other ones and see what's going to be available underneath those. It's going to be different depending on which question type you select. Uh, they're not all going to be the same. Some of them will have um, less functionality, but, but, but something different. Um, but it's important to be familiar with what's options, what's available in your advanced settings. So in this particular um, example, I'm going to show you is I want to show you how you pass you can password protect um, your Google Forms. I've received this question a lot. Um, how do I protect um, an assessment that I have so my students aren't passing it along to other students the next day or another block? Um, and I and I saw um, a video of a gentleman who used um, the advanced settings for password protection. I wish I could remember his name. Um, and give him the credit that he deserves, um, but unfortunately I don't remember his name. So, so I kind of I'm just going to um, show you how, how you can do this with the advanced settings. So um, in this particular case, I created a question type uh, um, with uh, with text. Um, I used a, a text question type, and I just titled the question um, "password." Um, and then in this password question, I'm going to go to my advanced settings and check on the data validation. Um, and this particular option, I can set certain requirements for what I want the response to be. Um, so if I wanted the response to be in numbers, I can leave this as numbers and I can set parameters in terms of um, how large or small the numbers should be. Um, in this particular case, I want this to be, I'm going to choose text and I want my text to, I'm going to say contain um, CMS. Um, there's, not, there's not an option to say equal, but um, I can I can put contains CMS. Um, and then in it's important that I make sure to make sure that, that you put something in here in this uh, custom error message because if the person enters it in incorrectly, um, then uh, it'll tell them what the password is. So you want to make sure you put something in here so when if someone puts the wrong answer, it's just going to display try again. And so now when I hit OK, it has um, made this so that this password has to contain um, the word CMS within it when they, when they enter this in. Um, and then once they do that, it'll take them to this 
second page, which is where my assessment lives. So you see this the assessment I created, nothing, nothing um, special, just a bunch of math questions. Um, but now let's look at my live form view. So if I click view live form, it takes me to my first page of my assessment where I can enter in um, a name and I can enter in, I just want to pick a school and I can pick a password. Now, um, I'm just going to type in the wrong password on purpose. Now when I hit continue, it's going to, it tells me, it gives me that message that I told that the error message that I said where it says to try again. If I type in the, the correct password this time, and I hit continue, it now will allow me to go to the next page of my assessment. So that's just using um, the advanced settings to create a password on your Google form. Another option that you have for locking down your Google form besides password protection um, is you can restrict um, who can complete the form. Um, so everyone might be able to see it, but once they go to complete it, once they hit submit, um, it will only select uh, information from certain people, the ones that you designate. So let me show you how to do that. So um, I have a form here, it's all one page. You could make it multiple pages, but you don't need to. So in my form, I am going to um, select the student ID number. So in this particular one, I'm asking for students to give me their student ID number. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna do this, the same thing that I did in the path of protection is, I'm gonna go to advanced settings, I'm going to select data validation, and I'm going to select regular expression. And again, I'm going to select matches. So uh, whatever enters is entered in here has to match um, this, this whatever I put in this pattern box. Um, so in this case, I'm going to put the uh, student ID numbers. So I'm just going to just, I'm just making up one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I want it, I want it to say, uh, I want it to, to uh, match multiple options. So um, I'm going to uh, choose this little bar that I have on my computer. All of you, all of you have this on there. It's just a little bar, just a, a little straight up line that goes that goes vertically. And I put that in there, and that is a that is a form of regular expression that's basically saying or. So it's saying um, I want I'll accept this student ID number or or this one. And then when I select the line again, I can select. I can put in another student ID number, and I can continue to do this until I have all my student ID numbers. Um, and so now, I'm just going to hit done. When I complete uh, this form, when I go to view live form, I can go over here to my student ID number, and, and anybody can, can complete it. But um, if I don't put in, I'm just going to put in the wrong student ID number. You'll see it doesn't match the pattern. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't select, it won't take that one. But if I put in a right one, it will let me move on. Um, so that's how you can restrict who completes your Google form. So I know what you're thinking. Aubrey, I ain't got time to put everybody's individual ID numbers in there one by one. Fear not, my friends, that's why I, I am here. I'm gonna show you a simpler way. That's why you watch the whole show. Now what I want to show you is something uh, simple that you can do within your Google spreadsheet. Um, this is available on any spreadsheet, so if you're using Excel or something else, um, this will work there too. Um, but they, you'll notice that, that uh, any spreadsheet will have different formulas or different functions that are available inside them and you can utilize. They're pretty universal, so whatever works in Google Sheets will also work in um, an Excel spreadsheet for the most part. So let me just show you one really, really simple one that you can use that will um, that will pull things together for you and, and, and including those ID numbers. So what you can do is there, there is a function called concatenate and that pulls information from two different cells together. Let me show you how easy it is. So, in my, so I'm going to, um, I have a, a list of all my students' names. I'm just going to copy this down. And let's say I wanted to pull all my students' names together. So, so instead of saying student A, I want, I want their full name right here. So I can just go in here and enter the concatenate formula. So I'm going to hit equal, and then I'm going to type in concatenate. Now if I just type in con, you'll see that in Google, the, 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 the formulas with con in them automatically come up. But the last one you'll see is concatenate. And now all I have to do is select 
which two cells I want to bring together. Now you can bring more than one cell together, but in this case I'm just going to bring two. So I'm going to say I want to bring their first name together, comma, and then I'm going to pull their last name together. And now I have, now you'll see when I click on it here, it has their first name and last name together. Now you can always clean this up. You see that their first and last name are right on top of each other. You can clean this up in the formula itself. So I'm going to go up here where the formula lives and maybe I want to put a, a space in between those. So um, I have my first cell, which is the first name, and then the comma, and then now I'm going to put in quotation marks and put a space in there, um, and then put one more comma, and now you'll see here, there's the, I've created a space in between the first and last name. Um, and the great thing now is in, is in Google, I can click on this, and now it, it'll copy that all the way down for everyone else. So let me show you how you can do that. Do something similar with the um, with the, the student ID numbers, how you can put the bar in there. So the way I, I can I can do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna hit equal and I'm, I'm gonna put concatenate. And now what I can do is I'm gonna click on the ID number for the first for the first student. And then I'm going to, to put comma, and then I'm going to put the bar. I have to put the bar in quotation marks. So I'm going to put quotation, bar, quotation, and then I got that one done. So, so that's the first student. Okay, the next student, I'm going to do a, a, a very similar thing, equals concatenate. I'm going to do the same exact thing. Except this time, I'm going to say, I want to select what the, what was in the first students. So I'm going to go back here. So I'm going to, I'm going to get this, the first student's ID number and the bar. And now, I want to get the second student's ID number. So I'm going to click on the second student's ID number, comma, and then I'm going to put the bar again. So quotation, bar, and I'm going to close it off with parentheses, go ahead done. So now, you'll see I have the first student's ID number and the second student's ID number with the bar in between. And now, all I have to do is drag this down. And now, I have them all. And if, this, if, this, if my list was longer, um, I could drag it down all the way and then I have all my students' lists done. I could copy and paste that into my um, regular expression in my Google Forms and now I'd have all of the information there uh, to restrict my Google Form. So the concatenate is a very simple but very powerful function that you can use inside of your Google Sheet. So those are just a few of the tricks that we had up our sleeves when it comes to being able to incorporate uh, coding into your Google Forms and, and Google Spreadsheets. A little bit of formulas in there as well. So um, hopefully you found that, that, that useful, something that you can use at some point whenever you're using your Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets. I want to make sure that I mention a couple of quick things before we close out. First of all, one access. Um, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and the Charlotte uh, Mecklenburg Library System have partnered to provide our students with library accounts with their student ID number. So now a student can use that, um, their, their student ID number to log into the uh, public library system and they can check out books, they can get the online resources, all sorts of things. Um, so what we want to we do here is we want to try to make sure that we get all of our students logged into one access. Um, your library, I mean your media specialist at your school has information on how to access it, how those students can log in, their log information. So please make sure you check with them. This is an excellent opportunity. Please make sure you give your students the opportunity to check it out. Um, they'll benefit. Um, there's a lot of benefits uh, for them um, by doing so. I also want to talk to you guys about Discovery Education. Um, some of you may have noticed that Discovery Education is now available in NC Ed Cloud. So now, when a student logs into NC Ed Cloud, they'll see an icon in addition to Canvas um, and um, uh, Destiny Bullet, all that kind of stuff. Um, which what students will see is, as well as teachers, Discovery Education. So now when they click on Discovery Education from NC Ed Cloud, that will automatically log them into Discovery Education with um, under, under their account. So it's that, that, that single sign-on opportunity there. Um, but I just want to make sure everyone was, uh, um, was aware that Discovery Education is now in NC Ed Cloud, and by clicking on the icon in there, it will log them into their account in Discovery Education. So no, another great opportunity there, just make sure that uh, you were aware of that. As always, as always, always hit the end. Uh, check out our blog, we put some things on there. Um, last week we talked about coding. 
where we, we put some information on there about different coding systems that, 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 that are available in terms of how you can learn to code, we put some sites on there. So we try to give you some ideas on ways you can do it. Don't restrict yourself with, with, with this, just this past week of our code. Don't be afraid to go out there and, and, and see what else is out there and continue um, the process of helping our students understand how, how to code. Um, there's a lot of power within that. Uh, so we put some things on the blog, so make sure you check that out. And also, um, the next blog that we're going to have coming up. Our Innovative Teacher of the Month, we, we continue to get those nominations coming in. Thank you so much for that. We, we continue to ask that you send those in. And as always, if you want to contact the and I, you can send us an email at our CMS Learns email address uh, or on Twitter at CMS uh, to the core. Uh, you can send us a tweet and we'll be happy to hear what you have to say or get back to you. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Make sure you stay tuned next week for another edition of ITW.